for this uh, weekend. We will cover uh, first two and three, maybe four uh, of the 37 practices. And uh, my attempt will be to uh, bring these uh, verses into the present moment experience, into our experience, how it is right now. And uh, the first verse uh, covers what is sometimes called the three poisons, aversion, attraction, and indifference. That's how Ken McCloy translates them. Uh, but uh, the word poison uh, does not really uh, is not really helpful, uh, particularly in the in the approach Ken McCloyd has uh, in the relationship to attraction, aversion, and indifference. So one of the main uh, insights uh, to be shared here is the possibility to uh, see aversion, attraction and indifference as allies in your meditation practice, not as enemies. So that's something we will try to explore, how attraction and aversion, which are usually, which in many Buddhist teachings have a bad reputation as something to overcome or something to apply antidotes to, because they are the troublemakers, how through a shift of perspective, we can actually turn them into allies into our meditation. And I think that's a beautiful general perspective to take that everything which arises in your, in your meditation can be an ally, can become the meditation object. And so in our first meditation, I want to uh, start to explore that a little with aversion. And I want to bring also an instruction into the first meditation from this third verse, which uh, finishes with the sentence, uh, rely on silence, rely on silence. So I want to explore in this meditation what is uh, what what is the meaning of this word silence here. So it definitely doesn't talk about outer silence. Maybe you are in a quiet room and there's quiet silence around you. Uh, but here the word silence uh, uh, points to something more profound. It, points to a silence which is always available and is surrounding and pervading your experience. So let's take our seats. If you maybe adjust your posture, but most important is that you feel relaxed and comfortable where you sit and how you sit. And then, if you like, you can close your eyes. Allow them to close if that feels supportive. You keep your eyes open, your gaze is relaxed. And then we start by making a shift, shifting gear. from the head into the body, from living in the world of thoughts and beliefs to present moment awareness. And the breath, the flow of the in-breath supports you in that sliding into the body with the in-breaths, but emphasizing of relaxing that notion that you are sitting in your head, 
as a owner of the body to release that, to relax that, and feel a sense of aliveness in your whole body, a presence in your whole body. Maybe you can deepen your breath a little for a while. Not straining it, but just breathing a little deeper so that you feel the sensation of the in-breath and out-breath in the belly and in the chest. And then with the out-breath, there can be a bit of a release, a relief in your belly and in your shoulders, in your face. So thoughts become less important and kind of naturally slide more into present moment awareness with the sensations in your body and your feelings and also the sounds around you. And best, as best as we can, we use our awareness and our breath to welcome whatever we notice, whatever we experience the inner weather. How are you in this moment? What, what, is, what is it, what you bring with you into this moment? Without thinking about it, but feeling and letting everything be as it is. And with the out breath, an opening, a softening, so that there is space for you, that there is space for your experience as it is. Let's even more consciously step into the temple of our meeting. Surrounded by the lineage and the teachers we bring into this moment. So see if you can slide into your own sanctuary, your own sacred space where you can relax, where there's no pressure to do something or to figure something out. And uh, sometimes it's possible to increase that sense of aliveness and being here uh, by just appreciating that you are alive, that you receive the in-breath, and that also the out-breath is happening, and that you can hear. And just this simple experience of aliveness, which we often take for granted. But as the Tibetans say, we don't know what comes first, tomorrow or our own, our own death. So remembering that just the fact to be alive is something, some, something worth to acknowledge and appreciate. And then the breath, together with awareness, welcoming, embracing, allowing. So that the struggle with 
present moment experience might be, might relax a little. You come to a place of more openness and contentment with what is. This is what is. And it can't be different than it is because it's connected with everything else. Just experiencing it. It's a gift. And then I would like to ask you to turn to that part of your experience right now where you have most aversion to. Is there something in your experience in the felt sense of your body where you have some aversion? Something you would like to be different. And instead of ignoring it or trying to change it, with breath and awareness, turn towards it. So you make your breath and that sense of aversion Your meditation object. Breathing as if your breath and your awareness is some gentle hands, or as if with breath and awareness you can touch and hold and maybe melt a little. But what is it in your experience, in that experience, where you, what you resist? Is it exactly? So you bring a loving curiosity What is it what you resist? And uh, with the out breath, is it possible for you to soften around, accepting the resistance, but um, looking deeper into the experience where you have aversion? Breathing. Dropping the word mine. It's just the experience. Uh, notice uh, if something changes to that counter instinctual approach. If your breath wants to deepen, allow that to happen. Sometimes it helps to open your mouth a little. So the breath wants to come and go through the mouth. You allow that to happen. And sometimes with the out breath, there can be a bit of a release. As if something changes.
you can drop any word, any description. Just this curiosity, what is really there? And what makes it difficult for me to be with this? What is it actually? You go deeper into the experience instead of contracting from it. And any kindness you bring, welcoming. You're aware that you do that not only for yourself. Get distracted, then or the mind goes to somewhere else, then then they return. Experiencing what is there as energy. The moment of awareness. how it changes. Sometimes it becomes more intensive, sometimes it relaxes. I'm just breathing with it and not doing anything else. Then in your experience, is there a sense that there's a separate I, a separate me in the experience itself? Or is there just the experience? Is there a separate I? separate me. And if there's a sense that there's a separation, that you are something else, then the experience, if you can relax that and become even more intimate, less distance. And of going more deeply into the experience, You know, feeling it from inside, where it is, not from above, not from somewhere, some, somewhere else, but where it is. And 
focus out, <coughs> focus out with your awareness into the whole body, into the surroundings, and take your time for that. So that the experience doesn't disappear, but is in a bigger space. Your hands, your feet, your whole body, but also the surroundings. Letting everything be as it is, not doing anything, relaxing, is the content of your experience, sensations, sounds, thoughts, breath. But maybe at the same time, You become aware of uh, spaciousness, a silence, which is surrounding and pervading coming of your coming and going of your experience. You can intuitively feel, experience that with your whole body. As if you are aware of clouds coming and going in the sky, but at the same time, there's a sense of sky-like quality. And then you rest. Receiving the content without doing anything with it. And at the same time, in a mysterious way, also opening or receiving a silence. Silence, which is always there. Silence, which doesn't change. Another word for that silence could be also presence. Presence, receptivity, a knowingness, which is always there doesn't change. Which is effortless.
and bound with us. And possibly you can let go even more. Fall a little deeper. Or oh, that the silence. Comes louder than the noise. Or it becomes more the foreground. Whether the content, usually the content is in the foreground. So if we can reverse that a little. Resting. that the content is changing by itself, non-static energy. Just if you can rest more in that, just not change non-moving mind. Relaxing the grasping. Grasping in form of wanting to get rid of something or wanting to get something. Allowing yourself to feel safe in your sanctuary. Thoughts are not so important, they are recognized as thoughts. You gravitate to the thought-free space. Meditation as receiving, receiving what is, and receiving silence with your whole body, with your whole being.
Yes, and then take your time to open your eyes if they are closed. Including the visual experience. And uh, maybe it's possible to maintain a sense of that silence. Even if there's agitation in your body or tiredness, It's also silence, stillness. And <clears throat> you have a bit of a choice to maintain that contact. Go back to trying to do something, trying to fix something, trying to get something. It's a bit of a choice. Yeah. That's uh have a short break, just five minutes, so you can stretch a bit or uh, change position. So we continue in five minutes. <laughs> 